What is going on beautiful people? Today I have got three really fun builds for you guys to try out just in time for summer. It is the end of April going on May and after May a beautiful summer vacation for lots of you guys out there. So here's three fun builds to try out uh, this summer or right now whatever you guys want to do. Let's hop into three awesome builds. All right guys build number one we're calling the Deja Vu Whisperer and this is a very well-rounded build that's basically good for just winning your games and getting to the end game and playing as smart as you possibly can. So the first perk is none other than Deja Vu. This has been my favorite perk for a very, very, very long time. It's amazing. It's a simple perk. This will reveal the three generators that are closest to you on the map and give you a 6% repair speed bonus when you work on those generators. So not only does this take the guesswork out of finding gens, especially on those insidious indoor maps, but also you get a bonus when you do those gens. But also this shows you the three gens that are closest together. So if you work on those gens, you will ensure that the three gens closest to each other will not be the last three gens left at the end of the game because that's called a three gen. And if you don't do the work to prevent yourself um, from making sure the last three gens are not the ones that are close together, you will lose games you should otherwise win. A lot of teams are uncoordinated. A lot of teams aren't on comms. A lot of teams aren't paying attention to this stuff. But if you bring deja vu, you can single-handedly prevent your team from suffering a loss to a three gen situation. Love this perk, can't say enough good things about it, and you don't have to waste any time getting to work and finding your gens. Now the next perk we're using is Resilience. Resilience makes us 9% better at everything when we're injured. So whenever we're injured, we will get 9% extra speed for repairing, sabotaging, healing, unhooking, cleansing, totems, exegates, you name it, we'll do it quicker. Now the cool thing about Resilience is when we're injured, and working on a generator, we will do those generators 15% quicker because of the resilience bonus. So then this makes doing gens a lot more spicier when we're injured. But the thing is, you don't always want to be risking it working on gens when you're injured, which is why we're bringing our next perk off the record. Whenever we get unhooked, off the record will activate and for 80 seconds, we will have three things going on for us. One, the killer cannot see our aura, which will make it hard for the killer to find us if they're bringing aura reading perks. Two, our grunts of pains will be reduced 100%, so the killer won't be able to find us from grunts of pains. And three, we'll actually have the endurance status effect, which means we can take an extra hit. Now, if we take an extra hit with the endurance, that's cool, but the real reason I'm bringing this is because after I get unhooked, I wanna just run straight to a generator and maximize that 15% extra speed. And because I'm not making any sound and because he can't see my aura, I will be basically off the grid for 80 seconds, able to work on the gens. Now, here's the next thing, sprint burst, guys. Because like I said, we're not wasting any time. This build is all about just getting the objective done as quick as possible so you can get out. If we need to use sprint burst for chase, that would also be helpful. If we need to use off the record for chase, that'd be helpful. Resilience also helps in chase with the extra vaulting speed. Solid, solid, well-rounded build, especially if you're working on a deja vu gen and the killer's coming up to you and you're injured. You can use sprint burst to make a, a decent head start, sometimes even a clean getaway. But we're also bringing a backup with us one med kit doesn't matter which one just make sure you bring gel dressings and bandages so that way you have two charges in your med kit so you can heal yourself nine percent quicker with resilience by the way and you can 99 your health so that way you can work on gens get your extra 15 percent gen speed and if the killer's coming close to you you can either sprint burst out of there or just use your med kit to top off your health but i love this build guys solid well-rounded build and it feels good to just go be the little deja vu whisperer because of off the record all right, guys, build number two is a cheeky ass little aggro build to basically just mess with the killer and be as annoying as possible. I'm calling this build the please hook me in the basement build. This is the only build you'd ever want to be unhooked in the basement with. Why? Because we're bringing Wicked. There's two things this perk does for us. One, if we are hooked in the basement, we have a 100% chance to self unhook ourselves, which is basically just like deliverance for the basement, which is awesome. Also, the second reason, the main reason we're bringing is whenever we're unhooked, we'll see the killer's aura for 20 seconds, which means we will know where the killer's at, not to run away from the killer, but to run to the killer to be as annoying as possible. Now, we will be protected with plot armor after we get unhooked, we'll have off the right for 80 seconds, which means we can essentially tank a hit, which is fun. Uh, again, like I said earlier, our aura won't be shown to the killer, our grunts of pains will be reduced, we'll have endurance status effect, and after we get unhooked, we'll be able to see where the killer's at for 20 seconds. So we could go find the killer to harass the killer and to make the killer chase us even more. Because if we get in chase again after getting hooked, we'll take an off the record hit, sure. 
If we extend the chase out a little bit longer, but go down within a minute, which does tend to happen quite a bit when you're being annoying, we'll have decisive strike. So we go down within a minute. We take the off the record hit. We go down, killer picks us up. Then we hit him with the decisive strike. This perk just got buffed recently. Now it's a five second stun instead of three seconds, which is way, way better. So we go find the killer, annoy him with their flashlight, off the record, decisive strike. Sure, this may not work out perfectly, but all of these perks are solid by themselves, even if we don't actually pull up the combos, and decisive strike will prevent us from getting tunneled anyways. So then we decisive strike, and then we'll be injured again. We'll have a five second head start to run away from the killer, and then we'll also have dead heart to have another chance at extending the chase even longer after we decisive strike, because that'll reset our health state and we won't be in deep wound anymore. So basically this build is all about being as annoying as possible to a killer. Now what you want to bring with this build actually is the Torn Blueprint. This will actually show you the basement hook auras for 20 seconds at the start of the trial, which means you will know exactly where the basement's at so you can be mindful and make sure you try to get hooked in the basement the first time you do get hooked. This is why I'm bringing the blueprint, that way you know exactly where the basement's at, no guessing game. Maybe even go over there and work on the gins there at the start of the match. Flashlight, purple flashlight, battery, focus lens. We're just going to be as annoying as possible, blinding the killer. And basically, we want to be the bait <laughs> with this build, guys. A really fun one to try out for those of you out there who are feeling bold and brash. But if you are preferring a sneakier, slower playstyle, then use the first build for sure. But we've also got a third build for you guys as well. This build, my friends, is also a little bit, actually this is kind of a good mix. We're bringing in the toolbox with us for that 50% extra gen speed. We're bringing two add-ons on it, the scraps and the wire spools for 20 extra charges. Because if you bring this toolbox with these two add-ons and you go run and do a gen, you will basically deplete this whole toolbox and do approximately 50% of the gen. I think you'll have a little bit of your toolbox left over. But what we want to do with this build is we want to rush and get 50% of a gen done as fast as possible. So that way we can unlock these perks. One, flashbang. After we do half of a gen, we can go into a locker to make a flashbang. We can drop this at any time to make a loud noise notification, to blind the killer. If the killer is doing a pickup animation on one of our teammates, we could potentially get a flashbang save, which was what we were going to try to do with this flashbang. We can also chain it onto other things. Let's say the killer does uh, hits our blast mine, gets stunned for a few seconds and blinded. We can go up, we can drop a flashbang on them to blind them a second time to be a bully if we'd like. But also, Blast Mine also activates when we do 50% of a generator. So you're seeing a trend here. We do 50% of a generator, we'll get our flashbang, we get our Blast Mine to basically bulletproof a generator for one hit. The killer will kick it, they'll get stunned, it's super fun to watch, and because it's so fun to watch, we have to bring Wiretap with us, guys. Wiretap also activates when we get 50% of a gen done. We can put a Wiretap on a gen, which will give us a vision radius around the generator of about 14 meters so when the killer's in the area we'll see where the killer's at so we can play smart we can play safe we can play accordingly wiretap's a very good perk especially on some of the indoor maps and it really just gives you a lot of intel because it lasts for 120 seconds also the blast mine lasts for 120 seconds too so you can put blast mine on a different gen wiretap on a gen or wiretap and blast mine on the same gen the whole point is to just have fun with it but with this build you want to actually rush and use your toolbox and get 50 percent of the gen done right away so you can unlock all your perks, and that way you can get the chance to use them multiple times in a match. And then the last perk I'm bringing, you have another option here. I'm bringing background player as my exhaustion perk. Whenever one of our teammates gets picked up, we'll get a huge burst of speed for 10 seconds. The next time we run, we'll run at a 200% speed for five seconds. This is so useful for either putting distance between you and the killer, or running up to the killer to potentially get one of those cheeky flashbang saves. It feels really good when it's pulled off. Background player is definitely a slept on perk that's a lot of fun. But if you don't want to bring background player and you're not trying to be that bold with getting team saves, then I would recommend bringing. Uh, oh wow, I forgot what that perk was called. The Ellen Ripley perk. Hold on, guys, bear with me. Oh, Ellen, Ellen Ripley. Chemical trap. That's what it's called, guys. Chemical trap. Bring this one and then you have a full on trap build. This perk also activates when 50% of a gen is done, which means you can actually put a trap on a pallet. So you can be running and chase, drop your pallet, stun the killer, and then you can put this trap on it. And if the killer breaks that pallet, then they'll be slowed for 50% for another four seconds, giving you time to actually put space between you and the killer. And actually chemical trap is a really fun 
expertise with this build because then this build just becomes it's basically the 50 percent gen build guys i'm gonna use background player in this one but chemical trap is also a really fun alternative if you want to change it up a little bit but my friends, if you made it to this part of the video, don't forget to smash that like button for the algorithm. Comment down below and let me know which build is your favorite and what builds you're going to be trying out this summer. And until next time, my friends, have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile and I will see you on the next one.